have no agenda. We have no questions. We're just cool. going to shoot the ship. Just going to riff. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah, it's already recording. So, uh, I Hey, guess. guys. <laughs> Welcome to another edition. I'm James. I'm Chris. Chris. We got Daryl with us. Back from Killboy. Uh, this is Fuel Stop Chats. And we're actually live on, on site at the Tales of Dragon. On a Tuesday at 1 p.m. There you go. <laughs> so, you're going to hear motorcycles. You're going to see, well, Jeeps. Uh, Jeeps. Jeeps should be on a different road, not on the tail of the dragon. They're uh, just getting to the different road. They use the dragon to get there. They have there. to get there. Yeah. It's like when we wanted to go to the foothills, we're going to go back. Yeah, that we got to go back the other way. It's the only road. The foothills. So, what's been going on? How, how things have you know been this summer? Have they picked up at all? Well, you know, COVID scared us, and then things just shut down there for a couple of months. It was really freaky, and then the floodgates opened after a couple of months. And man, it was crazy out here last year. We did more business at the end of last year than we had done in a long time and more than made up for the beginning of the year and then this year has been more the same really um you know quite busy the this time of year basically july 4th until the end of september is usually kind of a lull and july 4th is not usually that busy um and then for a couple of months there everybody assumes it's busy nobody plans rallies during this time of year everybody stuffs their rallies into like may yeah, and yeah. Um, it's funny because they try to beat the crowd and they just become the crowd. Become the crowd. <laughs> um, you're not stuck in traffic. You are traffic. You know. No, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this time of year tends to be kind of slow, so um, it's been pretty busy day, kind of hot, you know. So there's uh, a little bit of a temperature thing we have to be careful of. But it's not that bad. We've seen it be point where it was dangerous. You know, people were out here dehydrating and stuff, and we're shoving water on people, saying just take it. You know, we, yeah. we don't want anybody dehydrating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been steady, interesting. Seems like a lot of people redirected their sort of uh, vacation funds that they had planned on doing on cruises. That was all shut down, you know. Um, just traveling out of the country and all that stuff. Seems like they took that money and said, "Okay, let's let's go to the mountains in North Carolina. Let's go get a motorcycle and drive across the country." So it's good for Killboy. It's been good for us. Yes, good. there are people who you know struggle, and there are people who benefit from it, and we've been able to yeah. seemingly benefit. So it's been pretty good. Yeah, I mean that's my whole thing. People will talk about you know we can't get people to work in restaurants, and, and there's, you know nobody wants to do anything with unemployment. The lady almost hit that Harley. Wow. Her guy almost hit that Harley. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, it's just you know people people have just sort of redirected what they do to something else and the same thing and their time I think it makes people think yeah. about what their time is worth you know yeah. and their life is worth and they're mm, you know thinking more point. about yeah. you know, what we should be doing with our lives so it's kind of a shake up you know, what side on you know you're on doesn't really matter the fact of the matter is that people have changed a little bit how they think and um it's been it's been interesting yeah it was kind of scary like I said but um we've done okay so seems to be still popular but not you know too crazy it's not I mean, you can see you can sit here for like five minutes and nothing goes up the road. So, yes, there are times when there's packs of traffic and you don't want to be in that pack. But if you're smart and you just sort of work out a good spot to play in, you can get the road to yourself. Use the pull-offs effectively. You know, a lot of people get frustrated because other traffic isn't using the pull-offs. And it's like, you can use those as well and let that traffic go and give them uh, like a minute or two. You'd be exactly. surprised how that's much a great distance it puts on you. Yeah, yeah so that's a great point. Yeah. So we rode in, uh, there's 10 of us in our group and uh, we had sort of broken it up into two. I think the six went and then there was four of us four, in the yeah. back. So it's like, Tony was his first time riding through here. And I said, listen, just don't look in your rear view mirrors. I will be behind you because I had a camera going on my bike. I said, if I need to let you know to move over, I'll let you know. You guys got comms. Yeah. yeah. So we just followed each other through. We didn't have anybody pushing us. He was with Jackie in the back. And that was one of her first times going through following without her husband because uh, she's always been a rider on the back in the pillion, but now she just picked up a Triumph. So this is cool. one of her first times going through. And her husband, Ray, was leading the pack to go through there. But, yeah, it was great because... Nobody was pushing us. There was, there was no pressure. Yeah. It was so nice. You know how many pull-offs there are up there? I have no, no take idea. A guess. Uh, paved, 11-mile section of road, paved pull-offs. I'm going to say 25. 105. No shit. 105 paved pull-offs in 11 miles. It is crazy. We've gone through and counted them. I can't yes. count that many curves. It's supposed to be 318, and I can get up to about <laughs> 180 or 200. Lose and that's being, yeah. That's being, uh, you know... 
So there's no reason why people shouldn't be pulling off. Well, th- that's a good point, and there is an argument to that. Most of the pull-offs are on one side of the road. So yes. when you're going northbound, you have to be a little bit more patient because there's not many pull-offs on that side of the road. It's Basically, the dragon's on yeah, the side of a mountain. It's on the side of a mountain. And that's so good. most of the pull-offs are on the drop-off side because it's easier to build out on those. Yeah. It's harder to do things on this side. So um, you do have to be a little bit patient when you're going northbound. Don't go across the road to a pull-off, man. It, and don't push people. If there's not a place to pull over, I hate to see that. People get behind somebody going slow, and they're, like, blowing the horn and blues in their mind. And it's like, well, there's no pull-offs for, like, a mile. What do you want to do? Yeah. You know, yeah. and go across the road and cause somebody to wreck. That could be you. You know, so... Um, but yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of um, spaces there to pull over onto, um, both to let other traffic by and to, like I say, build up a gap where you can enjoy your ride at your pace. But if you're going at a pretty reasonable pace, like you guys are probably going 40 miles an hour, then oh, we were going slower than that. I mean, you won't yeah, but... have a lot of disparity in speed because that's about the average speed that people are going through here. You know, speed limits 30, um, and you, if you can go 30, 40 miles an hour on average. That's that's booking through pretty good. Oh, pretty you know? good. Yeah. yeah. So I saw you guys out there. Saw another group group out there. So for our listeners that don't know who Daryl is, Daryl runs Kill uh, Killboy Photography, if you will. Dot com. Yeah. Killboy dot com. Uh, they're set up out there. They take your pictures as you're coming around the corners. Now, do you guys use the same location each time? You just now nah, we move around. Light? Like I said, there's so many pull offs. There's a lot of options for angles, and so we don't want to shoot the same shots day to day. So we'll try to move around from one day to the next, and we'll reuse spots over the course of three or four days. But if somebody's here for two or three days, we want to give them a variety of shots and things okay. like that. But it's, it's like a roller coaster ride. You know, everybody says that. It's like we get to the end and we get to see our photos. Now, they're not down here. We take like 50,000 photos a week on average. Um, and it's too many to try to bring down here and then have it logistically so that people can look through them. So we take them home, well, we sort them on the spot. The guys sort them on the spot while they're shooting, and then we take them home and upload them, and they're uploaded by category of vehicle, by time, and we try to make it as easy as we can, but you got to give us like a day to get everything online. Then it stays online, definitely. We've been doing it since 2003, and photos all the way back to 2003 are still up there for people to go back and wow. know, yeah. to look them that's, up. Yeah. That's some storage there. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Not, racks and, and racks. Don't go out there and find your photo and then take a screenshot of your photo <laughs> that has the watermark on there and then try to get rid of the watermark. <laughs> pay the man. Pay the man. For we don't charge that man. much. Yeah, and you get the, the full digital off the camera, and we edit the photo now if they order it and you know make it a little bit more dramatic. So, um, so you get a better version of what we show on the web the, the web is just a preview thing but um but yeah we appreciate it if you actually buy the photo <laughs> yeah i mean they're out there they're sweating they're sitting there all day that's Take full-time it. job this is yeah, yeah we have uh seven guys and five of them that's full-time work for them that's their that's their sole income and of course my wife and i that's our primary income yeah. um so this isn't a hobby you know this is our job and we wouldn't come to your job and expect you to give us something for your time and effort that you yep. put into it and uh, without some compensation. So right. exactly. I mean, I'm not saying go out there and you know, buy every photo that's there. No, no, we don't expect that. Don't but steal it. Yeah. <laughs> don't, oh, that's a great It's really not that big of a problem, but we do see it. Oh, uh, yeah. We make, we make a lot of sales. Um, people uh, I see that on Facebook every now and then where people put it up there and it's like, and I just, come you know, on, man. I just, just reach out to them. Hey, look, if you like the photos, please purchase them so that we can keep doing this. Exactly. Thank you. And yeah. They usually just don't even think about it. So many kids are out there doing it for free, right. trying to get their name out. And I did it for free. I did that for two years. Yeah. I sat on the side of this road for two years, getting good at it, putting the photos online, letting people have them. So I get that sort of mindset that some customers might have that, well, why am I paying for a, for a photo? I can get them for free all day long. But this photo that we took, you can't get for free anywhere exactly. else. We got the photo, that one shot. And so... Um, we hold them hostage, as I like to say, until you pay the ransom. For oh, sure. <laughs> and just like we had talked about this before, you're just here on this portion, you know, tail the dragon. Right. Yeah, you're not yeah. on Shira Hall. We've, or... we've played around. We shot on the Skyway and we shot on 28 some. And what we found is it really doesn't pay out. It's like the people who are on those roads typically come through here. But the people who come through here don't necessarily go to those roads. So we get somebody sitting out there all day ah, okay. for uh, uh, a gotcha. fraction of the income shooting the same people and they're now picking up whether they want to get the shot from the dragon or the shot from the skyway so the idea of the chair skyway 
the image that people have is like we get this cool shot with this great view and everything and we've tried and maybe I'm just not good enough as, as the photographer but I've not been able to figure out how to capture the essence of the skyway and get a tight shot of the person. I guess you Learning history is something taught in school. Experiencing history is a right seldom exercised. Either experiencing the American Civil War by walking its battlefields and touching the soil where blood was shed, or experiencing musical history from the studios where the lyrical touchstone was created and recorded, the textile of history should be experienced firsthand. Participants in this journey should be riding a motorcycle from historical location to historical location so that the environment can wash through them in the open air. Ride History provides an intimate, educated, and personal experience guiding its riders through history on the freedom of two wheels. Check out www.ridehistory.com for available tours of the Gettysburg Battlefield or ride through America's entry into the Industrial Revolution on the oil field tour. The Knox Tour from Fort Ticonderoga to Boston or the Eight Day Rhythm Tour starting in Atlanta and hitting Nashville, Memphis, Muscle Shoals, Jackson, and New Orleans. Ride through American history at ridehistory.com. Well, I saw the drone sitting in there. You guys do drone footage? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've played with uh, RC uh, helicopters before drones, and, um, and then when the drones came out, they made it a lot easier. Yeah, I was yeah, flying. yeah. helicopters were great, but they were impossible to fly <coughs> yeah, with they real were, accuracy. They were, like, constantly just trying to crash. It was yes. balancing on a ball, trying to fall off. And um, yeah. so the drones with the GPS-based flight just really changed the game and the, the live feed onto the screen so that... You know, one of the problems with flying RC stuff is orientation, understanding when you're looking at it which way it's facing, yeah. and understanding when you put in a control which way it's going to move, you know, so with a helicopter it can move in all directions, and so if it's facing left and you push the stick to the right, it's going to move away from you, you know, so it gets weird, And um, yeah. but with the screen now, left is left, right is right, everything's Have you used intuitive. the goggles? I do, I've got okay. an FPV set up, and I've had a... I've had a basic FPV drone for a couple of years. I'm not very good at it. It doesn't have GPS, and it's the race style drones yeah, yeah, yeah. that take a lot of talent, and I don't have that much talent. Uh, it's practice is hard. It's <laughs> practice, practice, practice. I mean, the yeah. hard part is there's no uh, peripheral viewing. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's, it's pretty wide angle, but um, I just don't have the time to, to practice, especially at my age. I don't learn as quickly as I used to at 50 years old. And I'm so busy with the workload and everything. So I, I picked up a DJI FPV drone, which has GPS-based flight. So it can, you know, hover in place and you can let go of the sticks, you can land it, and it's a lot easier okay. um, to get the hang of. And it'll still allow you to get a little bit crazy and do flips. And it'll go 90 miles an hour, that thing. Um, but That's it'll what? also kill No, it. I have a DJI 4. Well, these guys are one of these there's a little one. They got yeah, the smallest one. DJI. Yeah, yeah, we've got several. I've got the Air 2S, the Mavic Pro. No, he's talking about the one that's hanging um, up in there. Oh, yeah. The big yeah, boys. That, yeah. That doesn't mess around. That's, yeah, that six rotor, that, that's a um, 3D robotics uh, rig that, that was around before um, DJI's Mavic came out. Mm -hmm. And um, it was really cool because it's got a double rotor stack. So there's one rotor spins one way and one rotor spins the other way. And if you lose one, it can still fly. Okay. And with any other type of drone other than a six or more rotor, uh, if you lose a motor, if you lose a prop, it's, it's falling out of the sky. And that one had some redundancy, so it's a little safer. It's a pretty interesting design, but it wasn't very efficient. The bottom prop is in the wash of the top prop, and it's not effect efficient and all that stuff. So we've got a lot of fun, uh, yeah, flying the drones and getting some different angles. And the mountains up here, it's, it's really what you need to get back and really, you know, capture the essence of the views and stuff especially during the yeah. winter and stuff i like to get out and play around oh, yeah. with the snow and everything and get those shots um so it's been fun to share what it's like around here with people from a different um perspective and and uh you know we watched the uh, the solar eclipse came right through here and i put a drone up and tried to catch the shadow coming through Didn't oh really, really. so cool. it's a 70 wide mile circle yeah and i could only see like a you know, a mile or two wide, so it wasn't anywhere near wide enough or high enough 
to yeah, really to capture the, the, the size and scope of that shadow, so I didn't really do it, but I tried. I had a lot of feet going down here for anybody that was hanging out down here. I remember just I was different stuff. flying back from Germany. Uh, I was in the Army, and I think this was 98, and there was a full eclipse. Solar. Yeah, yeah. take a place, but Stuttgart was the epicenter, was nice. like the main place to be. Locked in. Clouds. Oh. see shit. Did you get above but, them? It was the day that I was leaving. Yeah. So I had somehow gotten bumped up to business class. Sure, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. We take window a, seat? Yeah. No, I was in the... But there's three windows in okay. between. The, yeah. The, so it was me and my buddy Heyman, and he's like, dude, look out the window. So we're looking out, and the, the uh, pilot comes on, and he goes... Yeah, if you look out the you know left side of the plane, you can see the uh, they handed out the little glasses and all that. And they said if you look just to the right of the sun, you can see uh, two of the uh, what were the planes with the front end that broke the sound barrier? Concord. Oh, Concord. It was before yeah. they canceled. Them. Oh there yeah. There's two Concords that people paid a lot of money to chase it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, dang. Yeah. That was like a thousand mile an hour. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty cool. And <laughs> nice. oh, we were lucky when the eclipse happened. This recent one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my dad's gas. farm. Nice. In Missouri was four miles from being dead center of nice. that thing. So we had a really. Phenomenal yeah, it came right through Robbinsville, Andrews, the Terrahalla Skyway. And the dragon. Um, I was really torn. I wanted to do, I sh- and I kind of wish I had of now. I stayed here and just enjoyed it with everybody else. But I wanted to drive through the dragon during the totality. So I went from like daylight to darkness to daylight in one run through the dragon. You know, oh yeah, it would actually be a pretty cool video. It got. I tell you what was weird was uh, the uh, the horses walked back in the barn. Nice. <laughs> the the cows were all kind of huddled around the, the shade trees. And uh, and the chickens went back in the chicken coop. Nice. And then when the sun came back out, they were all just kind of like, what the Did heck? Did we just sleep? <laughs> Did, you, what, what happened? What happened there? They had the funniest, the, the animals really reacted weird to the whole thing. Cool. And it was, I just liked all the shadows, how it was all. Yeah. Oh, it got really the, weird, the leaves, darkness. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. leaves shadows and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the leaves shadows. Got real yeah. sharp because you yeah. had a single point of light. So this is a photography thing. This is the reason they use diffusers in studios and stuff you don't want a sharp point of light and so during that eclipse it went from a, a point of light that was you know this yeah. big in the sky to a point of light that was that big and so all the shadows get real sharp Super and edgy crisp. and uh for photography you don't want that so that's why they use the big boxes it's that same oh. principle right there it's like they're spreading that light out so it's hitting from different angles and it softens the shadows and the more you spread it out the more Fewer pleasant the yeah. light is yeah so i saw you unloading a bike over there is that uh that one yours? That's the wife's Ducati Scrambler, and we've got our friend coming, Justin from uh, Atlanta Custom Wraps. He's coming with his McLaren. He wants to ride with his uh, wife some, so I told him I'd bring that up and let them ride a little bit. I'm going to ride his Husky Barna. Oh, is that his Husky? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not a very good two-up bike, the Husky. So no, no, no. I'll, that I'll suffer. Even have pegs. I'll suffer and ride the Sumo, and uh, he'll he'll get to ride the uh, Scrambler with his with his wife. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got we've got two Ducati scramblers. I've got one that I've built more for street. It's lightweight. I put carbon wheels on it and did some things to make it as street uh, capable suspension, tune, um, exhaust intake, stuff like that. And um, really good bike for up here. I've had sport bikes. I've had super motards, and they have their place in certain situations. But for an all around just kick-ass bike that that ducati scrambler has been awesome to me um, yeah you can throw it. dirts on there you can do yeah. pretty much on any i run of those the, dirt the track tires here. on mine yeah and so i have <clears throat> amazed people with those tires up here and then my friend was like why don't you change those over you'd go so much faster with some street tires some, some you know aggressive slicks and i'm like dude i'm already dragging the pegs so it's not really going to pay off and i'd actually tried them and it was exactly what I expected. I I was a little bit hotter on the brakes going into the turns than I would have been on the, uh, the dirt track tires that it normally has on it. But then I couldn't go on gravel roads and stuff like that yep. or any kind of dirt. Mm. So I just switched back to the scrambler tires. They get down right to the point that I can drag my knee, never budge. And if I want to hit a gravel road or something, then I can do that too. I'm a little hesitant on gravel with carbon wheels. If a rock flies off the front and yeah. whacks the back end, it could crack it or something. Yeah. Um, but it's not likely, so I just don't spend a lot of time on gravel roads, but I have the option there if I decide I want to. And it's just kind of cool picking on people with dirt bike tires. <laughs> well, yeah, I came up with uh, my KTM, and I had 606s on it, and I rode that through here. And then I went and switched it out to the um, Supermotos. Okay. And, yeah, we were talking about the brakes. I smoked the brakes. I basically ran out of brakes near yeah. the end because I was just getting on the brakes too much. 
It's just not made for it. Yeah. So yeah, big bigger bike and and uh, you know, especially if it uses the rear brakes a lot, they can they can get if they're linked or something like that, then they can get overwhelmed. There's a technique for braking that they teach you in racing schools and stuff, and it's the opposite of what you'd think. So if you feel like your brakes are suspect or they're getting hot, and you start babying them and being gentler on them, it makes it worse. So the technique that they teach you to keep your brakes cool is to brake smooth but aggressively and get off. So do it late, do it hard, and get off. Because as long as the brakes are being applied, the temperature's going up. Friction, yeah. yeah. And so like Granny, Granny going down the mountain with her Cadillac with the brakes smoking, it ain't because she was driving it like a race car. No. It's because she's been dragging that pedal, that pedal for a mile, and that temperature just will not come down. As right. long as there's contact being made, that temperature's going up. Now, granted, if you're hard, then it's going to go up faster, but in the long run, it will cool off more if you get off the brakes um, as soon as possible, get on them as late as possible. Um, and be aggressive on the brakes, especially in a car, but even on a motorcycle, yeah. you can be pretty aggressive on the brakes and manage the temperatures better. In cars, we have to deal with the brakes being enclosed, not exposed, like they're on a, on a front end of most motorcycles, and um, they temperatures are a bigger problem. But on bikes, it's usually not that bad if you uh, mostly use the front brakes and manage the temperatures a little bit by using that technique. It helps. It works pretty good. Not too many people have brake problems on. Sporty bikes, it's usually people overusing the rear brakes on the cruisers, and they're not really, they're heavy, and they're not made to do all that work, um, and they're buried up under some bags and things like that. Yeah, well, especially in this, I mean, you're constantly on your brakes, and it's because yeah. it's just corner after corner after corner. And it's usually fluid. It's usually the brake pedal will go soft, and so that's something, you know, that a lot of people know, but a surprising number of people don't know. It's like how to tell the difference between brake fluid overheating and actual pad overheating and if the brake fluid overheats your pedal goes soft because you got air in the lines basically it doesn't press like a fluid but your pads can overheat and kind of gas up or glaze up and you'll still have a firm pedal it just won't stop and that's how you know your brake fluid's still fine your pads are overheating and you need to address that and you need to get some more aggressive pads with more bite or whatever it takes um, but a lot of a lot of these guys on cruisers they they smoke the fluid these are don't use the most raciest fluid, and that's there's no reason not to use race fluid in a Harley. It's not hurting anything, and it raises better, the temperature way up, fluid. 650 degree boiling point versus yeah. just 400, 400 degree cheap stuff or yeah. whatever you know. And um, and yeah, if you're gonna be not even just riding aggressive, you're just gonna be on a road that might demand a little bit from the bikes, then it'll pay off and it'll save your life. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, yeah. That few for an extra for... 15 bucks on right. the brake fluid, it's totally worth it. Don't skimp out on brake fluid. So here we are, it's, uh, what, late August, getting ready to get into September. When do the leaves start changing? When do you see things starting to change here? Because uh, I know a lot of people come on to do leaf peeping. Mm -hmm. It's great to do on a motorcycle. Uh, be careful of the leaves on the ground, leaves, of course. Yeah. But when they're, they're dry, it's actually not that bad. It's more of, an, it's more it's of a mental thing. Yeah, it's in yeah. the morning. If they get wet, they're slippery, but it's more of a mental thing to be running hard on when it's dry. But, yeah, as far as the leaves around here, it's hard to say. I mean, nobody can really predict. But because of all the elevation, you can pretty much pick a week between late October and, and mid-November, and you're probably going to catch an elevation where the leaves look good. You know? okay. um, but it's different. You know, from down here versus just down there at the river by Topoca Lodge, the leaves tend to change down there pretty early at the river. Um, and then, um, which is weird because it's low, but it's got something to do with all that water, I guess. Hmm. And then um, up on the Skyway, the leaves will start changing early at the top. What mm -hmm. is up there, there's a lot of dead um, trees and, and then a different type of tree pipe up there that doesn't really even ever change. But, um, but yeah, it works its way down the elevation and, you know, it just it's hard to say. It's, it has so much there's so many factors in leaf changing thing but typically late october early november um is the typical time to come see yeah, so i know there's a lot of wild. people that sort of plan to come and see mm. that it's great tough. great roads to ride yeah the weather's perfect mm -hmm. and you have beautiful scenery yeah. you, you really can't if you catch it. it that two weeks there where it's really orange and the dragon oh yeah it's amazing um and we've had a couple of years where it snowed like on halloween um, something like that so we end up with these days where it's not that bad out it's maybe like 60 degrees it's perfect um, but there's actually snow on the background of the banks and stuff and there's orange leaves still hanging around too it's crazy and very rare we've only had like two years and 18 that I've seen it kind of do that but we've gotten some cool shots for the people that would come out and drive it it's 
scary to be out on the road and, and riding a motorcycle when there's actual snow around you, but the road is usually pretty pretty straightforward. If you don't ride like an idiot, it's not that scary. Well, I mean, if it's iced over, it doesn't matter how you ride, well, you're probably going to go down. But the road does, does stay pretty... That's an airplane. Uh, C-130. Oh, yeah, it's a 130. They're doing low flight. So the military does practice uh, nap of the earth flying through here. Yeah, I used to jump out of the planes that used to do that. So they're doing a... The second one. Yeah, they'll do probably three or four of them. Yeah. Back they're to Fort Bragg, boys. Four props. And they'll, they'll do that at night, too. We'll be sitting here at 11 p.m. and all of a sudden... And they fly so low, you don't hear them coming. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, it's like, whoa! Right um, and uh, they'll have the lights and everything uh, on and or in minimal. Much better to be down here really? flying inside that thing. There's no AC. You're packed with your parachute, your rucksack, all of your equipment. You're packed next to each other. You, got you can open a window or something, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody's sitting right there in front of you because you got four rows of people, and you're getting ready to jump out of this thing. So anxiety levels are sort of high in the plane. Anyway, yeah. Uh, and it's just hot. And I just, never thought about that. I think uh, they're uh, probably flying pretty much empty, but or but really, they're not staying really at a, a steady altitude. Right. Yeah, they're going down. They're going up and yeah. banking left and right. And Ball the pilots are having a ball because yeah. they're in the front row. <laughs> they know what's coming. The it's like a driver in a car. Like, God damn it! Give me ball. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to get out of that plane. Yeah, things we see around here, it's pretty cool. We we come through. You know, we're out here sometimes at night. We came through last night pretty late, and um, we get to see. Occasionally, get to see you know stuff like that. Um, the military practice. We saw them come over with an Osprey one time, but um, but yeah. And actually, last night, interesting story for your podcast. Um, we were coming through, and we saw where there had been a wreck where somebody went off the road or something. There was a pretty good bit of oil on the road, and um, and there was some debris there. Like they tried to clean it up with some paper towels or something, but it was still there. And we got out and checked it. It was about this was about 11 p.m. I guess, and uh, felt like it was pretty slippery, and it was in like a a blind right and it was right where a motorcycle would probably be like on on the mm -hmm. white line you know and it was a section about uh, it was about 20 feet long and about four feet wide and my wife Lori was putting her foot on she's like yeah that's pretty slippery and so we keep stuff down here oil dry and brooms and leaf blowers so we we say ah let's go ahead and just do this I was going to do it in the morning but I don't want to take a chance on somebody coming through in the morning and no, feel I'd feel like, like a turd if somebody got hurt or killed up there because I didn't take a minute to just do this and we were we weren't tired we had pretty good energy and everything so we came down grabbed oil dry broom leaf blower drove back up there put that stuff down scrubbed it in with our feet and everything swept it around some and then blew it all off with the leaf blower and it was in a lot better shape so it's just one of those things I think is pretty cool that um, not a lot of people but a few of the locals they do pitch in and take care of the place and um, just give back for you know what we get out of it it's the least we can do see people get hurt um but yeah that was last night's adventure basically it was is always yeah so i heard about a cool vet stuff. going off today really yeah. yeah somebody posted about a vet went off so i didn't see anything yeah i i saw somebody posted about a vet like it was like 12 hours ago or something on a oh maybe it was yesterday morning. i don't know so it could have been yesterday um, so what do you think of the uh tree of shame over there yeah it's a good reminder that you know, there's a lot of accidents up here, and it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Like when we would when we would go work with uh, the tourism board for the county and represent this area to people in other parts of the country, and they would approach us and be like, you know, we're thinking about going up there, but we hear about all the accidents. And it, there is a lot of accidents up here. There's no question. Um, it's a tight road, and there's a lot of machines that are balancing on two wheels, and that's just a part of it. But we average, you know, serious injuries and fatalities are really actually statistically low but you always hear about it you know and that's what i would tell people at these places i'm like if we're in ohio and i'm like you somebody wrecks on your you know highway 487 you think i'm going to hear about that down at the dragon no no nope. but somebody wrecks on the dragon are you going to hear about it where you're at yo yep. so and there's a million cameras you know including us but everybody's got gopros running and stuff yeah. out here and so anything that happens tends to get documented it's and over reported you know so everybody's a reporter out here and anything that happens yeah. it goes pretty viral pretty so quick. you tend to see all the negatives and you don't see the 99.99% of people go through and just nothing happens no, have, have a good yeah. time um, 
that doesn't go viral. Nobody, you know, nobody's <laughs> no, going to no. share that. No, they want to share the gore. So exactly. it's the way it is, and it's and it, really a shame. It's, it's a good reminder that you know you need to keep that in mind. It, it can happen. People think that you know I don't need to wear the gear, or worry about it because I'm not going out to wreck. Nobody went out to wreck. You know what right. happened. That's not. That wasn't their intention. And no. They think that it's always the fast people, and no, it's majority of the time it's actually the slower people that are struggling to get through. The fast guys are the last ones you got to worry about. You know, as long as you stay in your lane, right? We're all good. So right. When people start driving over, and then they get freaked out because somebody pops around the corner going yeah. fast, and they yeah. get mad at them. And yeah. it's like they were they were doing not what they do probably yeah. doing much wrong. You're driving in the oncoming lane of traffic, and right. you get mad at other people for almost hitting you. you know, it's That's like, crazy. It's, it's kind of wild. We don't get too many um, confrontations down here. It's been a couple of years since there's been anything really uh, Oh, where somebody ugly. got yeah. went at each other? Well, they were head to head. There was a couple weeks ago, there was a couple of guys out here yelling at each other, but they you know, parted ways. I think it was just because he wouldn't use a pull-off. Um, the pull-off thing's been interesting because they were, there was always places to pull over, but it was always, until they paved it, it was too sketchy. Like, you wouldn't expect right. anybody to own a motorcycle to pull off a drop off and in the gravel so it was okay you know and now it's just this frustration of seeing it go by and it's a beautiful perfect pull off and you're driving right by it you know it's just like so people get real frustrated and i do too i deal with it if i'm trying to get somewhere yeah especially or i still I'm, can't believe there's yeah. over 100 of them <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna count them now when you go up there right no no i'm not <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your word gonna, for it. I'm gonna take your word for it. I'm gonna watch the road. Man that yeah. lives here and does this for a living said this. Yeah, it was a rainy day and we were kind of bored down here messing around. There was nobody here. I was like, they had just put them in. And I'm like, I want to go see how many there literally are. And I counted them and from yeah from Tabcat to the state line, just the 11 miles only, which is about all there is. Um, there was 105 paid 105 places paved to pull over. pull-offs. <laughs> well, you probably it. cost There's like no excuse for millions not of dollars. No excuse. Off. Yeah, yeah. So I think we'll, we'll wrap it up on that. Man. That's I mean, a good that, tip. That was a, that was that's a good pro tip. tip. That's, that's great. Uh, Daryl, I appreciate your time today. Again, killboy.com. Go get your pictures. Pay for your pictures. <laughs> Take care, Daryl. Take care of people. Take care of pictures. Ride safe. Use pull-offs. And enjoy. Chris, Daryl, everybody else, ride her out. Ride her out. Thanks. Thanks.